Hello everyone, I have here the Lego Jurassic World Dominion set called Gigantosaurus vs. Therizinosaurus Attack. It comes with 810 pieces and I purchased this for $130 US and built it live over on Twitch. In addition to the two major dinosaurs, both of which have new elements, you get six minifigures, a small ATV, an interesting compound helicopter, and then, well, a compound, the headquarters over here, and this observation tower. Let me show you just what all this looks like together at first before I get into showing you some of the details, and I will start with the big dinosaurs because that's what we're most interested in here. And if there's a chance that anybody is coming to a set like this to get one thing, it will surely be one of the dinosaurs and not one of the minifigures, right? Because, I mean, come on. Dinosaurs, it's all about the dinosaurs. All right, yeah, let's just, uh, let's get right into it. Gigantosaurus here features a brand new body mold that has these long spines on the back that unfortunately are not long enough to properly reuse for an eventual Spinosaurus remake, which we're overdue for, right? We got a Baryonyx uh, neck and head now, which could be okay for a Spinosaurus, but we didn't have a proper body. This ain't it. Something interesting about this body, it's rather long. So comparing it to a standard T-Rex sized body that they've used a number of times before. Wow, yeah. All right, they're, they're actually trying to go for some sense of scale here. The head is taken directly from Indominus Rex. So that's just a set of existing molds. They've got the T-Rex arms and the T-Rex legs and the spines do continue right down the the uh, the tail here. This is a rubbery piece here right at, at the end still, whereas in here you get the hard plastic that's able to rotate side to side because those are separate parts. Uh, this is dual molded here with black, uh, kind of a satin black, you know, it's not, it's it's got some texture to it. So look, yeah, look at that. It's really satin, not matte, not gloss, satin, yeah. And then the, the olive green, obviously, there's a little bit of difference of, of the olive green here because this is this is paint or print on top of black. This is black, the black portion of the, the build. And then there's the olive green portion of it down here. I don't know if it's literally dual molded or if there's some other technique that they use. And then printing showing that it's got scars. You know, this one's been uh, in, in battle quite a bit. And it has otherwise the usual articulation that you would get from one of these large dinos from Lego. I think that the use of the Indominus head here is not the worst idea. You know, they've they've done some some worse part reuses and substitutions before. I think this one works out nicely. I think this looks pretty good and fits with the the larger body as well. And yeah, I think it turns out okay. I'm not a paleontologist, so I don't know how many egregious errors they have made to accuracy relative to what science presently, currently, most recently believes these monsters to have looked like in real life. But I personally like what I see here and I think the design choices were at least decent for a toy. Therizinosaurus, Therizinosaurus, however you pronounce it, this is a weird one. This is a really weird one. Well, it, it was weird in real life. What we do know of it was weird. What we assume of it, based on what we know, was weird. And this toy here is weird as well. I, I, I don't know about this. I really don't know about this. Yes, they had these crazy long claws and that's probably about the best way to, to make those work in Lego form. You can individually articulate these. They got the new arms with the, the funky knuckles, you know, kind of looks like it's kind of limp, limp wristed, but I, I think this is, I think this is about right. Probably could have angled the wrists up just a little bit. I think that's about right. The body of the Baryonyx here, but what really bugs me personally is the, the neck and head, the upper neck and head, which is all one part. It's, uh, well, it, it looks like a, like a, like a snake. Looks like a looks like a snake head. Uh, they're, they're trying to suggest feathers. They're trying to suggest that it, it has kind of a bird-like look. But I see snake in it. I see too much snake. Yeah, you got the little hook beak. Like that's that's kind of okay. I just I expect this thing to have fangs in it. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But I, I'm not convinced by this. And the placement of the joint there is kind of awkward. Like okay, well will this will this work? That kind of works. Like the the angle of the spine or the, the curve of the spine here, that works well. Do like this, mm, it's kind of looking broken. And then you can rotate it like this. See? It's, it's, it's okay, it's not great. Also the fact that the tan down here, the dark tan doesn't continue into the tail. I understand, just from the, the, 
the building techniques used for this, but I do wish that that continued through there. Also up here a little bit into the, the throat area where, where I'm assuming that this, uh, this would be a combination of scales and feathers kind of going back and forth. I don't, again, I don't know exactly. Uh, legs, I think I'm good with. Body might be a little bit thin, but it's probably the closest thing that Lego has in their inventory. But that head, please do let me know what you think about that head shape because it's very questionable to me personally. Otherwise, interesting and very different. And I, I respect different at least, even if sometimes I don't like it. This observation tower is overbuilt, I would say. It is super, super strong. You know, a couple decades ago, Lego was making a lot of things that were underbuilt, that were, well, frankly, flimsy. This is the opposite of that. I think this may actually have more strength in it than it needs. This will actually be a little bit difficult to take apart because some of the, the techniques that were used to clamp it all together with Technic pieces. Not a big fan, am I, of the blue pin there, but it's not a big deal for a play scaled thing. Down at the base, yeah, you got a little bit of foliage and suggestion of, of rock work there, which is which is nice and all, but you know, most of the key stuff is up here. This is really smooth going around the outside edge. That was done nicely. Well, not only the, the, the roof section of it, but also the windows, which are built with with studs on the side construction here and here and then you've got just a different pane here the idea is that you would be able to have somebody bust through the window i'm assuming because there's an action feature over here they did highlight it with red which i think they probably did need to for the sake of play for younger kids here because otherwise it's really really well integrated and i don't mind this you know i so many times i've complained ah lego's always putting the big red and the arrows and the yellow and it's in this case, I'm actually good with it. It also works a lot with some of the red coloring that's used inside. So this doesn't bug me. And here's the action feature. See, that just pops out. So I'm assuming that at some point in the movie, there's going to be a window breakage. Somebody's going to go through that, or there's going to be a window breakage. Somebody's going to fall off the edge because there's no safety railing here, only along this along the sides. You can put minifigures all around this. You've got communication set up here, probably a suggestion of radar there as well. And inside, they've got some semi-holographic or glass-based uh, uh, displays. Um, unfortunately. There's no input device. It's supposed to be like a like a like a touch input device, I suppose, for each. Also, you can't really see what's on them all that well when they're up against these uh, these opaque backgrounds. They're just they're just stickers. They're just clear back stickers. I like the stickers. They look good, and I like the use of those pieces there. Plenty of space to put some figures in here, and you've got something over here which I'm assuming is a emergency call box for you know if things start to go awry in the in the park is it the park what is the facility this time this is presented as the headquarters of biosyn but right now it's totally dominated by this helicopter here so i'm going to take that out of the way so i can focus on the structure for a minute ah okay yes definitely much much better this is obviously open around the the back to reduce the part count and also partially to make it easier to to play with but uh, you got this this l shape going on i like that sticker like that's that's nicely done even though it is clear backed and you know not everybody has a good time with those i get it but I personally think it looks good. And they've continued with the, the rounded corners around here, which looks pretty good. Still making it feel like it's part of a, an, a, a wooded area, you know, a forested area with enough foliage around. You got the security cam right over here for the entrance to the garage. So this is a small garage space where you can roll something up. I don't know exactly what this is intended to represent. If it's some sort of safe, if it's some something for uh, decontamination or if it's just a microwave. <laughs> Because this next thing over here looks like it could represent a fishing device of some sort. I don't know exactly what that's intended to, to represent, honestly. Uh, this is probably a fire extinguisher. You got a tool in there. You look inside, you see a microscope with a decent little build with a stool in the corner. Some stickers used up to represent screens and such around the place. And 
I mean, I think the level of detail here is pretty good. A little experimentation station and the all important incubator. Of course, you gotta have, have an incubator at any Jurassic Park, Jurassic World related science facility. More foliage around the outside. A little station for some walkie talkie radios. Second level also has just enough room for some minifigures to be posed in there. I do wish that this level was a little bit deeper. You know, another stud or two would have gone a long way to encourage play with the the figures actually being moved around minifigures being moved around these two screens work really well because they have nothing opaque behind them light is able to come right through and you can see the two specimens that are featured prominently in the set there on those screens little coffee makers trying to look a little bit more is it co yeah it's got to be coffee it's like a, is it a keurig i think i think that's what they're going for with the water tank in in the back like that i think that's what they're going for kind of cool uh I'm assuming that that is a repository of different ambers. They've got different things in there in the corner there that are set up. They almost look like Jedi holocrons was what I think of. And then a desk over here for some some big wig. I'm assuming Dr. Wu. And he's got the all important amber uh, mosquito or old, you know, old in flying insect of some sort that's up on the screen there <laughs> all important coffee mug as well and a small model of the head of well you know the skull of an old dinosaur up on top there's not much roof not much roof at all which is awkward given that they have this this decent sized i think this is actually offset i messed up it's offset a little bit but a decent sized well, reasonably sized i'll, I'll say helipad that is for a very not reasonably sized helicopter to to land there a little bit of satcom action going here and the helicopter yeah the helicopter is just wow wow <laughs> totally dominates the whole thing and it's not really set up to have somebody you know with play hop out of here and then come down the the ladder or access the back at least you can access the side here let's look at the helicopter more this is what would be referred to as a compound helicopter. It's got standard rotary blades to provide lift, but then it has these forward-facing fans to provide extra forward thrust. So it's able to, to fly faster than a typical helicopter. These things really do exist. They've been experimented quite a bit. They're not particularly common in real life, but you may be seeing more of them in the future. Different companies have been experimenting with them for quite some time. These can be rotated technically, but it's not really designed to be used that way because if you start to rotate this, this upper strut has to bend or the lower strut has to bend and stuff. You have to get this out of the way in order to make that work. If you want to think of these as contributing to lift, I personally would not. It doesn't make aerodynamic sense because all the the whoop down wash from the, the anyway hey the rotors uh good sized for a change you know for four blades there hey maybe you could even imagine that these would lock and this would become an x-wing configuration a real world x-wing configuration it's a shame that this is such a such a different design of helicopter than we usually get but then it uses the same old overused canopy piece oh well Something else I think could have been could have been nicer there, but it's very easy to put a figure in here because they don't even get attached with any studs, which I appreciate because you don't want to get the legs stuck in there and then you, know, you pull up the torso, legs are left there, and then you have to try to get the legs out. This opens up on both sides, which is good. You get a good use of space. There is a tray that opens up. I'm assuming that this has some communications built in. Uh, I don't know what that's for. Is it, f well, I mean, probably petri dish down there but is this is this antidote is this a tranquilizer i don't know they don't have any weapons on board this as far as i can see but it's you know nice to be able to carry something you could potentially drop something really tiny down in there maybe this could have been set up to hold a little bit more cargo but it, i mean these are done nicely sorry about that these are set up well that is a sticker on either side i don't know i kind of like the fuselage of this uh not the canopy just because it's been done so much the final build is this little quad ATV, which I think is pretty perfect because the proportions of it relative to a minifigure are pretty good for a, uh, you know, a single seater. It's got the big fenders in the front, not so much in the back. A couple of clips on the back to hold on to minifig accessories, and it doesn't waste too many pieces to get you basic transportation for a single figure. So I like that. Looking at figures, it is a Jurassic World set. Therefore, you get Owen on the left. That's Claire in the middle. And on the right is the returning Dr. Wu, now 
older. I like the torsos of the ones in the middle and on the right, although, I mean, Owen does have actually a good torso print, good hip print, decent leg print as well. It's just, how many Owens have we gotten now? So they've gotten a little bit boring to me. Nice to get the teal color over here. You can see a little bit of, of additional secondary face showing through for Dr. Wu on the side, but it doesn't really matter because it's, it's in a fine place. The printing for Dr. Wu is definitely not great because the, the skin tone doesn't match over here. This is not great either, but I think it's a little bit better given what it's printed against. It's a little bit more difficult to print skin tone against such a high saturation, cool tone as that. Could have been a little bit better, but they're not terrible. The designs are good. And taking all these hair pieces off, you do have some alternate faceage to look at back here. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, this one's a little bit smudged, I think. The, the black is a little, the, the lines are a little bit thicker than they should be compared to like, this is fairly crisp, this is very crisp. And then here left and center are a couple of returning characters. That is Dr. Alan Grant on the left and in the middle is Ellie Statler. She is back once again. On the right is a new character, Kayla Watts, I believe new to the franchise. Of course, we got the, the printed amber here with the, the built-in mosquito mayfly, whatever that's specifically intended to be. Yes, it is indeed confusing to see Dr. Grant looking a lot like Dr. Hammond because of, yeah, the, the white beard and the trim of it and everything. But I think we'll get past that once we actually see him show up in the movie. Now that print right there is good all the way through. Like everything about that, the opacity is good. The, the, uh, the amount of depth that's suggested there, like the graphic design work is really good. Probably didn't need to have the waist lines, at least in my opinion, but overall a good looking figure. Maybe the teeth are just slightly blurred in there. And looking around the back, no alternate face, of course, for Dr. Grant here. Yeah, that that one is especially crisp. Like that's that's what I want to always see. With this one though, obviously the black ink that's stamped on there is stamped too low. Look at the eyes. Also look at the mouth. Yeah, that's just misaligned. Here's the assortment of leftover parts. And then the sticker sheet is purely clear backed. And this is what it looked like. Did not feel like too many stickers to me for the size of the set. I felt fairly appropriate for the most part in terms of where they're placed and how they're used. All right, let's talk about value. $130 US. <laughs> I hate how expensive everything is today. <laughs> Ugh, ouch. I figure they're probably adding a solid 30 to $40 to the retail price just for this dyno alone, based on what I've seen before and based on what, I, based on what I've seen this year. That's probably what's going on here. Let's say I'll go low on this one, I'll go high on this one. We'll meet in the middle. I'm gonna say $40 here, I'm gonna say $20 here. So we're going to say $60 between the two of these. That, that leaves, that's, that's my assumption. And you know, you can disagree with that for sure, but that, that's what I'm going to go with as far as trying to make sense of the price. That means that this stuff here is $60. And you know what? Relative to other stuff that's on the market right now, this doesn't feel terrible. Like if this was a Star Wars set, ignore these. If this was a Star Wars set, would they charge $60 for this? Easy for this plus these figures. Easy, easy, probably more. So honestly, relative to what I've seen on the market this year, I'd say this is not terribly priced. I hate that I have to come to that conclusion, but I do. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that it's very expensive, but relative to where we are in the world today, doesn't seem that bad for the amount of stuff that you get. There's a lot of playability with the headquarters. I really appreciate that. Although I always would like to have more thickness, more depth to buildings. They do let you play with this. They do give you places for minifigs to interact on both levels and to some degree on the upper level. The, the helicopter could have been so much smaller, I think, because ultimately it, it does only just carry one single person and tiny, tiny, tiny bit of car uh, cargo in there. So I think if anything should have been changed on this other than the design of this weird thing, it would have been the helicopter. Like shrink that down, shrink it, shrink it, shrink it way down. And it still would have been just as playable. Maybe they could have brought the price down a little bit. 
the more I look at this and the more I look at references, uh, yeah, they tried to suggest feathering on it and a little bit of feathering down under here and stuff. I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. It's just so weird. And I, you know, I've looked at, I've tried to look at relatively modern paleontological uh, breakdowns of what they think this would look like based on fossil evidence of other uh, other animals from its uh, its ancestry because we don't have a lot of material from this exact species. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just weird. This one I think is fine as a toy, a toy Giga. Again, just my opinion. Overall, this whole toy I think is a very good toy that a lot of kids will be able to enjoy significantly. And I guess it's not even super overpriced, except it kind of is, except it kind of isn't. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope that this provided some kind of value to you and I'll talk to you again soon.